Before we dive in, let's start off with a generic deep learning model. We have an input that is transformed to an output. If you want to be theoretical, you can understand a model as a probability distribution over the output given the input. But for now, let's just think of it as something which goes from an input to an output. This could be for any task, image classification, exam grade prediction, sentiment analysis, dog bark classifier, whatever you want. An attention mechanism is just another Lego block that can be used in any deep learning model that one builds. In December 2017, when the paper Attention is All You Need was released, it was shown that an attention mechanism is apparently the only Lego block you need. Okay, by this I mean you can do away with the more traditional RNNs, recurrent neural networks. These Lego blocks can be entirely replaced by an attention mechanism Lego block when dealing with sequential data. In fact, attention mechanisms are so powerful that they allow models to not only perform better, but also train faster, which in our world of finite computational resources is a great gift. So that we can all actually benefit from this magical Lego block, let's understand what an attention mechanism actually is. We have sequential data. Each data point in our sequence is a vector of numbers. This, for example, could be word embeddings in a natural language processing NLP task. Let's call these input vectors values, so we have vectors v1 to vn, where we don't actually know the length of the sequence, so we are going to use some unknown variable n. We are, however, fortunate in that the vectors are of a fixed dimension, which we can call dv. The aim of an attention mechanism is to simply perform a linearly weighted sum of the value vectors. We would idly want to train the model to learn the optimal weights, the alphas, to perform the best the task the model is being used for. However, we cannot simply learn the optimal alphas because the input is variable in length and can change from one input sequence to the next. So we wouldn't even have a fixed number of alphas to train. Another restriction on the alpha weights is that we don't want to scale the input vectors in any manner, i.e. we need our alphas to be normalized, which means they must sum to 1. Thus, to obtain these alpha weights, we cleverly make use of something called a key and a query. Like in a dictionary in Python, every value has an associated key. Often the key is the value itself and this is called self-attention. However, we will talk about attention generically, so let's have our sequence of key vectors from k1 to kn. The query q is also a vector, but for a single particular attention mechanism, there will only be one query. Depending on the task, the query can be constructed from a range of different places. Now that we have a query and a key, we can obtain the weightings for the values, the alphas. There will be some function that combines the query and the respective key to obtain the linear weighting for the corresponding value. As an example, a popular example is dot product attention, where we simply perform the dot product between the key and the query, apply a nonlinearity, often the hyperbolic tan function, and then apply the softmax function to ensure the alphas are still normalized and sum to 1. So if we try to summarize the attention mechanism, we have some simple equations to describe our Lego block. At the input, we have a query, keys and values. The output, y, is a linear weighted sum of the values. The weights, alphas, are computed using the query and the keys. However, there is something huge missing here. You may have noticed that all the equations here are very deterministic. We don't have any learnable parameters that can be updated during the training of a model that uses attention. 
we can introduce fixed size matrices of learnable parameters by performing linear transformations of our keys, values, and query. The Q dash, K dash, and V dash denote the query, keys, and values that we have so far been using in our equations. The fixed size matrices WQ, WK, and WV are then the parameters that can be learnt by the model, and it can be trained to perform as well as possible on the task at hand by updating these parameters. And that is attention for you.